Here we are on the cusp of a full Android Q release and we're taking a look at the fifth public beta, which although refines more than redefines, still manages to add some great new features. Here are our top 10. One of the biggest inclusions has to be one of the most requested. For anyone with a Pixel 3 or 3 XL, sorry only those two for now, you can now save your eyes with a dark theme boot animation. All you have to do is toggle the dark theme within the system itself and then reboot twice and you'll see on the second boot after installing the Qbeta. Silent notifications are now way more organised in Qbeta 5. They are nicely separated from your regular notifications within the notification shade for even easier access. This makes it even easier to unmute or dismiss notifications that you want but aren't quite as interested in. The fully gesture control navigation has had some tweaks but the most notable of those are how it works with the rest of Android. Probably the most obvious at the start is once you activate gestures you'll notice two small semicircle lines at the sides of your display. If you swipe these in to the centre of your display you'll activate the Google Assistant, therefore negating the need to long press an on-screen button. You can activate the assistant via the active edge feature, but the setup page for this has had a tweak to help you better gauge how strong you want your squeezes to be. It'll now give you a visual response of how hard you're pressing, and that corresponds to at what point the Google Assistant will activate. This will make it much easier to set the squeeze at the most comfortable level for your grip. Sticking with that squeezable theme, with gestures activated, once you start squeezing, you get a little pop-up message saying squeeze to talk, which then disappears pretty quickly before the assistant springs into view. Overall, it's nothing massive, but it is a great little visual prompt. If you've never snoozed a notification, you'll probably be pleased to hear that the feature is now disabled by default within the notification shade. So that means if you swipe right or left, the option with the little clock is no longer there, which is good for those that don't use the feature. Luckily, if you do use it, you can re-enable it within your device settings, as it now has its own dedicated section. We saw in a previous update that the Wi-Fi status bar icon had a slight makeover. Well, now the mobile data icon has been updated to match. It actually really helps work out just how strong your data connection is at a quick glance, and it also makes the status bar feel much more cohesive as a result. Screen pinning has now returned with Qbeta 5, and even better still, it now works with the gesture navigation method. To enable, just swipe up into your app switcher, select the app icon, Pin it and that will keep the app in view until you deactivate. To deactivate, it's a simple swipe up and hold gesture. Another area where the app switcher has been altered is in the pixel launcher suggestions. You are now able to remove these recent or suggested apps within your device settings. If like me, you don't find the suggestions helpful, when you deactivate them, it will simply show your dock icons when you swipe up into the multitasking switcher. Our final new feature in this list proves to be a good one. Of course it is another fix for gestures, now with apps that include left sided hamburger menus, you can peek and then activate them simply by pressing and holding the left side of your display. It doesn't work everywhere just yet, but it's much less infuriating than swiping left and constantly closing applications like on the previous update. Ok so that just about covers a more refined update to the Qbeta path. If you found any features of your own that you'd like to share, then please let us know in the comments section below. Before you head off, be sure to subscribe to see more Android Q content. But thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.